back to the podcast, guys. We're back. It's we're, property we're here. Guys. Frederick. It's video day. Glenn. And as you can see, we've got our uh, special apple juice that we got from Joe Rogan specifically. Yeah, he Joe ships Rogan. it to us. Thank you for sending Thank us you, Joe. this. Appreciate yeah, it. Cheers to really Rogan good. Right over here. Keeps us going. So who do we need to thank uh, today on our podcast uh, sponsors? Well, as always, we're going to thank Darren and Ryan Gregg with Hop Mortgage, taking care of all of our lending issues and making sure you guys have fantastic rates out there and getting yeah. those loans closed for us on time. Thanks, guys. That's right. Doing and it good. Let's thank uh, Sarah Gallegos with Open Escrow. Open Escrow. What an outstanding escrow officer. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Working it. To totally crushing it on yeah. a daily basis, too. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have Alexi Hutchins with First American Title taking care of all our title needs. Thanks, Alexi. You get so us all those, you, Lexi. All, those, all those numbers and stuff we need all the time. Well, especially she gives us the COVID packages. Mm. So we got you had the, to go there. the See, wipes. I, hey, I'm it's, just saying, it's a service she provides. <laughs> she does the, the flyers, the wipes, the booties, okay. the gloves. It's important for realtors to have that stuff. I understand that. But attention, everybody out there. I've... I've asked Glenn on numerous occasions not to mention COVID during these podcasts because I don't want to date us. So in a year you look at the podcast, you're like, COVID? What was that? Don't worry. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm just kidding. But now I'd like to point out that now you just talk about COVID I did. on your podcast. Okay. But let's, right. let's hop into a topic I think is very related. Like to what a good transition. Let's hop right in. To COVID. Actually. Yeah, I love it. Oh, right? okay. <laughs> so don't talk about it no one, let's talk about one it one of the biggest things that we get from clients of ours is when they first meet us and they're talking to us they ask us like hey is the market going to crash what's going on with the market with covid and all these things going on and you know people remember 10 years ago or 12 right. years ago and they really think that there's going to be like these crazy deals out there like there were so Kind of broach that subject and we'll kind of bounce a little bit on this but what are your, your take on that oh way to put me on the spot there all right so I looked into my crystal ball, mm. and so I know exactly what's going to happen, right? Good. I do think the market obviously needs to correct. And there's a lot of factors playing into that we've been appreciating for probably like 12 years in a row now. Okay. Inventory continues to stay low. Unemployment, the second round of closed downs or lockdowns, unemployment is picking up. Right. People are starting to really miss those payments on their forbearance. Mm -hmm. um, so all of this is n not trending good. I would say the banks are missing the payments more if you get my joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the banks are missing those payments. They're missing it a but, lot more. But, you know, they're soulless <clears throat> entities, so... Uh, good point. You, so let's play a little debate. Okay. Let's play a debate. I'm going to play the guy who says, hey, nothing's going to get affected, and then you can take the other side of it. Okay? Sure. So here's... I just heard you. So here's my take. My take is... We've got no inventory out there, really. Mm -hmm. We have probably five or eight buyers for every property right now. True. The interest rates are so stupid low yeah. that it's cheaper to buy a place a lot of times than it is to rent. It's all true. It's so, all very true. So I say, as devil's advocate on this side of the debate, I say that we can make it through COVID and we're going to have very little correction. Yeah. Well, I do think... Yes. There's a lot of credence to what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, San Diego, the real estate's world famous. Uh -huh. How many times do we run into people from overseas that are like, I'm going to just dump cash into a home? Yeah. And you're like, where does all this money come from? True. It's crazy out there, yeah. right? Um, so the market as a whole is insulated. Some other parts will get hammered a lot worse than we're going to. We know that. We've seen that from 12 years ago. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, there'll be some buying opportunities out there for people. That Some people will yeah. go into short sales. Um, and those are a lot easier to navigate than a foreclosure. And I think there leads to better so deals. So talk, talk about a short sale and talk about why you have a little bit more negotiation power. A lot of people probably aren't familiar with them. You probably weren't around when the short sales were going on back then. Well, luckily for you guys, I'm a short sales expert. And so this is what ends up happening. Someone needs to sell their home for less than what the loan they took out on the property was. And someone's making copies right here, right now. So yeah. it's kind of hilarious. She's right making now. copies for us, actually. So she's making us copies about short sales and stuff. Thank I you. Know. Here comes all the information. <laughs> it's coming in soon. It's coming. So the interesting part about short sales, though, is you are dealing with a seller. Seller accepts your offers, goes through the terms, but the bank makes the final decision. So that when you're buying a short sale and it says in the MLS, lender approval required for a short sale, right. you say yes, because they make all the final decisions on that stuff, including the sales price, commissions, repairs, right. all that good stuff. So when you hear the ding, by the way, it means that the copying's over. 
the copy. Um, so we made it past the copying part. Good. That was very good. That was fun. Thank you for doing that for us. So. <laughs> hey, that's when you do a podcast in your office. <laughs> hey, yeah. People make the copies. Yeah, this is a legitimate situation. <laughs> yeah, so you guys, if you guys don't know, we're in Big Block headquarters right here in Mission Valley. You can probably see all this beautiful artwork in uh, Sam's office. Yep. We absolutely love it. So, uh, and you know, just to get sidetracked here for a little bit. Let's get sidetracked. One of the reasons I we're joined Big Block, not only because of the favorable commission splits, is the sounds fact like, that sounds like a commercial by the way that they're art lovers <laughs> right yeah, that's right i walked in and there's all this cool original and you know some famous prints in the office right. by uh, some pretty contemporary artists yeah and uh, i knew i was home as soon as i walked in yeah so let's talk more about short sales back to that back so to short sales i think your point about the negotiation happens with the seller first right mm-hmm. and then the cool part about a short sale is that you're you and the seller are team at that point because right. your goal is to get the bank to accept the offer that you've agreed to. Right. It's very different than a traditional transaction where you're negotiating against the seller and you have two different things you want. In a short sale, you both want the same thing and it's a matter yes. of beating the bank up as much as you can to get it. Right. So I have a lot of people are probably confused on how a buyer and the seller can become a team in a short sale. Yeah. So what ends up happening is during the short sale process is moving forward, your foreclosure process is moving forward in tandem at the same time. Right. And so the only way to stop the foreclosure is to complete the short sale. Right. And if the short sale, the banks give you a timeline or a lot amount of time to get the short sale done. Mm-hmm. And if you don't hit that mark, it's foreclosed upon. <laughs> then you bring done. in the lawyer, they bring in the lawyers, <clears throat> you literally get foreclosed and kicked out of your house. The bank repossesses the property, which they don't like doing. Nobody wants that. Banks are in the business of lending money, not selling real yeah. estate. Yeah. So it's always easier to negotiate right. during a short sale. Now, with that being said. With a seller involved. The doomsday scenario we're talking about, and we went through it 12 years ago. Yeah. To a huge extent. I personally don't think it's as um, tenuous right now because people are sitting on equity. So if you own a house. True. You have equity in the house because it's gone up in the last year. I mean, we've gone up 10%. Mm-hmm. There's some cities say 16% just during COVID, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, so that means you have equity, so you can just sell. But there could be a tipping point. So if there's three sellers for every one buyer, then the only thing you can do is drop prices to attract that one buyer. Right now, our ratio is so healthy. We're probably eight to one on buyers versus sellers. So we're a long way off. But could it happen? Sure. Those interest rates tick up. You know, yeah. It could happen. It could happen, and it's likely. But overall, right now, this day, we're in a market that's very, very active. Yes. Um, it's still, unfortunately, for buyers, a seller's market. Um, but the seller or the buyers have low interest rates to combat that. So even though you're paying more money, if you've got a two and a half or two point seven five interest rate, you're never going to get that again. So I know, and that's what's fueling a lot of this. Absolutely. Is that interest rate, and you you have that interest rate for thirty years or fifteen, or if you pay it off sooner, you know whatever. But you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. On a thirty year fixed, I mean. And that governs yeah. your monthly payment. Yeah. And really affects your purchasing power for a lot yeah. of buyers. I think the other thing, too, is we get a lot of people that, you know, when you live somewhere, you either rent or you buy. I mean, there's mm-hmm. no, I guess, unless you're living with your parents, I suppose. But the point is, is that those are your two options as an adult generally, right? Sure. So I always look at it like if I were in this market and I was 25, I was 30, I had a good job. I knew I was going to be, the key, too, is knowing you're going to be there for a while. If I'm going to be somewhere for five or 10 years, then every bit of payment I make on a rent, it's gone. Like I'll never get it back. Gone, right? vamos, burn it. Bye-bye, um, wave bye-bye to that money. So for those Bye people- I you, just paid my landlord's mortgage. Yeah, even though it's a, hard, it's a hard pill to swallow, like, hey, oh my yeah, God, oh, I gotta pay 500 grand for a condo. But the reality is that your payment isn't gonna be dramatically higher than your rent. Right. And you're setting yourself up because of, of appreciation, tax write-offs, and then also you're paying down principal because of the low rates. So in five years, you know, you have 50, 60, 70 grand in equity in your property. Yes. And that's a lot better than just throwing the money out the window. So that's, that's what I would say. If you're out there and you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to wait till the market sinks and sinks and sinks. Could it? Sure. But when it does, the banks tighten up. It's harder to get a loan. The rates are higher. So you have to make a decision on your quality of life. Do I want to just bite the bullet and do it now? Yeah. Get the low interest rates? I think so. 
So let me tell you a story as long as we're talking about this because yeah. you could people can wait. Oh, I'm going to wait for this great opportunity to buy homes. The values are going to be so low. Right. And then, but you know what ends up happening? Now you're competing with a bunch of buyers that have cash on hand. Yeah. For some of these properties. True. So if you're a first time home buyer, you're looking to buy a four hundred thousand dollar townhome, right? Yeah. And you're going you're going to do your FHA. You're going to do one a five percent conventional, whatever it's going to be. Yeah. And when that market goes down, you're going to cash will come out a lot more. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. A lot more cash will come out. And um, now you're competing against cash buyers. So you're in a great buying situation. I agree. Values are down. Right. It's the time to buy. But there'll be other conceivably better loans or better offers. And they'll take that property. That's actually a very valid point, because when we had the the collapse, which started in San Diego in about 2007 or so, um, all, all the cash came out of the market and went into real estate. I mean, it was crazy. Well, people were pulling money from the stock market <clears throat> exactly. and putting it into real estate. Exactly. So that's what you're really fighting against. Mm-hmm. Another topic I think people uh, talk to us about a lot, because we do a lot of design consultations, we remodel properties, all that. And so it's really interesting to hear people's ideas of what they think their right. style is right yeah and some people will say oh i'm modern but then when you really get down to it they're not and so let's talk about like some of your favorite styles and i'll talk about some of mine and kind of why okay um so i think we're pretty similar we both like mid-century modern design yeah, for sure. like hard lines clean lines pretty you, simple designs. you like crazy i do things going on <laughs> so I do. So one of my favorite styles that no one ever really appreciates or does anything with is Art Deco. Right. Like, I love Art Deco. Mm-hmm. It's so intricate. It's so whimsical. Um, it's just the Statue of Liberty, the Chrysler building in New York City. I think people know that type of stuff. Sure. Uh, oh, man, it's just such a beautiful design. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but then you got to love Frank Lloyd Wright and everything he designed, like the interlacing of nature with man-made construction right that juxtaposition that most people are trying to get in today's homes yeah you know and then that's the creme de la creme right there it doesn't get better than yeah. that in design um and that's what i gravitate towards. yeah i think it's one of the biggest things that's happened in the past especially the last five years is that juxtaposition exactly is, is exactly what's going on in today's world mm-hmm. nobody's just straight modern nobody's straight traditional nobody's straight contemporary or straight rustic everything's a combo yeah. It's like rustic chic. Yep. Beach glam. Um, <laughs> beach chic. Beach chic. Uh, beach glam. I like beach glam. That's not yeah. bad. Urban rustic. I mean, you can go on and on. It's a juxtaposition of different styles. And I think. Industrial modern. Exactly. Um, I like that because what you're seeing is that you. I look at it this way you have a foundation, which is kind of the template. So, for example, industrial. Right. Yeah. right? But then you want to put some pop on top of it. And that's where the fun comes in. Right. To me. So industrial modern, for example, right? Yeah. The structure is going to be open, exposed. Um, Electrical. Uh, vents. Expo- yeah, exactly. Vent exactly. Ceiling. Exactly. But then the modern will come in and give it life and, and brightness and, and the clean lines. and. So you have like a teal accent wall in yeah, there. Yeah, you have wood. You'll have stone. Some wood. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think my favorite is probably, uh, yeah, you, bo- you and I both like mid-century modern. I probably like... Maybe a l- I probably stray a little more modern off of that, but I still like that because I like the woods, the glass, the stone. Sure. Bringing the outside in. Um, a lot of stuff we're doing now, too, on our remodels, we're putting in those, uh, we call them accordion doors, infinity doors, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, you'll have like a wall, basically, it's like 8, 10, 12 feet, and the whole thing just opens up. Mm-hmm. And then you get that indoor, outdoor from your living space, your kitchen, into your deck area, your patio. I mean, that's... That's what it's all about. I mean, especially in San Diego, that's what everyone wants. They want that outside, yeah, inside, feel. absolutely, or or to skate between both. You could have a <laughs> kitchen in your house, and you could have a kitchen outside your house. Absolutely. And it's like, what kitchen do I want? To oh, use you know, today? What reminds me too. So, um, we were at each other's houses enough to know kind of how it's laid out and stuff. So, my house, I was going to put this like fancy fire pit in, right? Yeah. And I was going to do like glass stone and have a gas and. And then I was at a friend's house, and he had, like, an old dryer vent thing, 
and you put wood in it and light it on fire. It was, I was like, this well, is great. It wasn't a dryer vent thing. It was the actual, Oh, I'm sorry. It was, it was the, the drum. The it drum. It was the drum. You're right. The drum. The, dryer. the stainless steel drum. You're right. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so I got one. They're cool. And I just set it up and I'm super happy. Um, How much did that thing cost you, by like the way? Like 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Yeah. So I went to Home Depot and I got the whole set with the chairs yeah. and the cushions and the fire pit and mm -hmm. the table. I think it was like $500. I know. And I have to say, yours is much cooler. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm jealous because you can throw anything well, in that thing. And burn this is what I would say, you know, uh, check with your local codes because <laughs> like mine's, mine's, mine's a wood burning and, and Glenn's going to, this is why he's laughing. He's going to tell the story. So mine is pretty controlled. I don't know. It's, I don't know, like that. Yeah. And like so a, there's only so much. It's of a dryer, so. Right. So, and I'll load it with wood and I'm careful. I have a little thing I put over it, make sure sparks don't start fire. But Glenn has a story about yeah. the not the first time. The first time he really loaded up his fire pits. So tell right. that story because it's funny. So we bought a, a fixer in Benita. I might have mentioned it on the show before. I don't know. But now you're up to speed. So we were, we've were we just been tearing stuff out of this house left and right. Hmm. Just furniture, not furniture, but cabinets, just wood framing, framing, framing yeah. whatever you can think of. Yeah. So we And they had a ton of um, kind of landscaping stones in the back, like the flat paver stones. Yep. So Jody actually took it upon herself. She made a really nice fireplace Glenn's wife, out of it. Jody. My wife, yeah. Hi, Jody. Hey, Jody. I'm gonna <laughs> tell the story right now. She did a good job. She laid it all out in a circle. It was a nice stacked big, it up. Stacked it up. It yeah. was probably like three feet wide and yeah. two and a half feet tall. I mean, right. it was quite substantial. Yeah. And so we started just throwing. We cut down three old trees, and so we had big logs. And I start the fire, and we're just throwing the logs from the trees in there. Like all the wood and stuff we ripped out of the house, the fire is rocking, right? Yeah. Like we're having a good time. Music's on. <laughs> I think I had a game on on the TV. We have a TV outside. Was it, it was more like a bonfire. It was than more it was like it was a controlled a fire. Yeah, it was yeah. A, definitely a bonfire, like a big bonfire, right? <laughs> and so, sure enough, <laughs> one of the neighbors calls the fire department on us. Fire department guys come <laughs> in the backyard. They're like, uh, "Yes, yeah, sir." Yeah, you're not supposed to have a fire <laughs> this big in your backyard right now. And I'm just like, oh, really? Why? I'm like, yeah, well, we're, it's in fire season and we're like code red. So it's pretty, dry, it's pretty dry out right now. So it's kind of unsafe. You need to have a sparkle rester on your, on your fire pit. And, and I'm like, yeah, we don't have that at all. We're, we're, I, don't even, I didn't even know, right? I didn't even realize it. Right. Um, the, he was really cool about it. He's like, hey, do you mind if we hang back and put this fire out for you so we know it's out? I'm like, oh, go for it. He's like, yeah, we're not here to ruin anyone's time, you know. Actually, they were there to ruin yeah. everyone's well, they, time. They were being safe, too. But yeah. but the, the, here's the funny part. So the, fire, hmm. the fireman is my neighbor, apparently. <laughs> and he's all like, he's like, yeah, man, we've, we've been watching you fix up the house as we drive by and yeah. stuff. We love everything you've been doing. Like, you're doing a really good job on the home. Um, so, you know, but put thank, your fire out. Thanks for like increasing our home values. But it's like, yeah, I need to put this fire out for you right now. Though. And I'm like, hey, t hey, I'm like, do whatever you want. Like, I, I don't care. I never meant to cause any trouble. Do you want a beer while you're here? You know, that type of thing. And they're really nice. So, yeah. So we can get back into fire pits like in another another episode. But I know all the codes now. But the point is, is that uh, a wood fire fire pit is pretty awesome. But you got to have it in the light, the right space yeah. the spark rester and make sure that your local jurisdiction allows it let me add that here's the key word we fire don't want any lawsuits pit. fire pits are approved not bonfires bonfires exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so i think we covered a lot man we've covered we made up um, we did a lot of ground yeah um i'd say the other thing too that we're running into a lot these days is people that don't know what to do should they sell and move yeah. Should they stay and fix up their house? We're running into that a lot. Let's let's kind of tackle that before we get out of here. But um, yeah, I mean, how do, how do you gate? Like, how do we even get people advice? Like, you usually we, we have to go out to their house and look at it and say you can or can't do this, and here's what it costs. But right. overall, what's the analysis somebody at home should should do? Well, it's everyone's situation too. Yeah. I mean, if you if you have little kids in school and you're in a good school district, I mean, you're going to stay and, and ride it out. Right. right, that's specific to that situation. If you have the ability to sell and rebuy, then do it. Because right. you're gonna sell at a high point in the yeah. market, you bank that money, right. rent a year and come back in the market yeah. then. I, don't really, uh, I wouldn't really do that personally, but uh, take advantage of those low interest rates. You'll yeah. have cash in the bank. 
you'll become one of those offers with a really solid loan at that point. True, true. I mean, we've talked about backwards buyers, so we won't get back into that. But right. You know, as just a refresher, don't go out and look at houses and then fall in love with one and you don't have your house on the market. And then decide to sell your house. That's not a yeah, good not situation good. to be in. <laughs> and not in this market, like you're talking about, we have multiple buyers per yeah. every one property. You you just won't make it. You won't make it. Yeah, you'll get yeah, No out. seller's going to choose you. No, not You're going to be the one they don't choose, and you don't want to be that. Yeah. So I think um, we got to figure out, uh, next episode, we're going to get uh, Darren in here and talk about uh, interest rates, which I think is really important with yes. everything going on. Everything we're talking about relates back to interest rates. Um, so I guess for now... I'm actually done with my apple juice anyway, so. I'm, I'm taking my time just sipping this apple juice. I, didn't, I don't think anyone told you this is a sipping apple juice. Oh, you're right. I was just saying that. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, Joe Rogan sends it over to us. Yeah. Right? I don't blame you for that one. And uh, it's the stuff he uses on his show. And, I mean, he's doing really well. He, yeah, well, hopefully it rubs off on our show. I'm hoping, you know, he got $100 million. I'm hoping maybe we get, I don't know, $10 million? Is that fair? <laughs> I'd take 100000 Spotify. Thousand. He gets a hundred million. I'll take a hundred thousand. Mr. Spotify, we're available for ten million dollars. <laughs> yeah. You get all the content. You get these guys. You get the yeah. show. Everything. What else do you want? It's a great deal. Yeah, it is a great deal. And our blue shirts, by yeah, the way, too. Blue and shirts. and the blue shirts. Okay. Till next time. We'll see you guys in the next podcast. It's property right. guys, Frederick, Glenn. Cheers. We'll see you. Cheers to my empty glass. Later. Later.